Motor viewers, and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. That's our 2018 Nissan. This is the Versa. It's got the big 1.5, and I'm going to show you a perfect example of how service data doesn't cost, but it pays. Well, this little guy here seems to be just your run of the mill check engine light. So we start her up. Of course, we got the money light. I got the parking brake on, that's why that's on. So, key on engine off. We jump in, and we got your classic P0705 transmission range sensor. So naturally, I'm sitting here gathering some data, and let's see here. We want to go gear switch. We just want to get the switch positions, park reverse, neutral, drive, and then... Uh, I don't know if it has a low. I guess it's neither here nor there. So we'll go show selected. So right now, the vehicle's in park. Um, just a minute here. Let me get to some different data. We want the range. There we go. So right now, the vehicle's in park as indicated. The park switch is on, which I would assume it would be. I put it in reverse. The reverse switch is on. Neutral, drive, and then low. I don't have the low switch pit up here, but... We can see that, you know, there's drive, low, drive, neutral, reverse, and park, and it seems to work. So I'm like, well, maybe this problem's intermittent. So I decided to fire it up. So I fire it up, and I put it in reverse, and it goes in reverse, and I put it in neutral, and it says drive. And I put it in drive, and it says drive put it in low, it says low, then back to drive, back to neutral, that's reverse, and that's park. But see we got some double on going on, because now it says it's in drive. And then I'm going to take my foot off the brake, and now it's back in park. Put my foot on the brake, put it in reverse, Whoops. so that's in reverse, that's neutral, and you can see reverse is on and neutral is on. Now I take my foot off the brake and now it says neutral. What in the thunder? Then I shut the car off. So key on, engine off. Reverse. Oh, this is drive. And you see the switch status is real slow. So that's reverse, neutral, and we can see we're double on but then it, all of a sudden it goes so it's real slow and sluggish and it seems kind of weird to kind of make you think like what the frig is going on here so my next step at that point was to look in service data see what okay you know at first i'm thinking like this switch is going kind of stupid this p0705 so i'm going to pull up some service data here i looked on that computer out there but i'll pull it up here and i'm going to show you some value in certain things so this is Identifix. This is one of the uh, repair programs that we use uh, out of the many, P0705. Now, Identifix is usually used for silver bullet fixes. So shops have this, you go in, you put in your code, and you whip down the list of parts to change. I don't use it for that, um, but I do take everything I read with a grain of salt on here, and sometimes it's handy. Uh, so this guy writes uh, his fix. He, had, he changed the backup light bulb, and I'm like, what in the thunder does that have to do with any of this? Uh, and he writes, after driving for 10 miles, transmission range code sets to 705. The shift indicator on the scan tool shows it will be in the correct shift position. Install the new range sensor from Nissan, and the problem is still the same. Then he writes, uh, to his test procedure, verify reverse brake lights, tail lights operational, repair is necessary. Uh, uh, try driving it with the tail lights unplugged. If it no longer sets a code, visually inspect the bulb sockets, connections, and the tail lights. Um, and I'm like, what in the heck is this guy talking about? Because if we go into service data, um, it doesn't say anything about this. So we'll go into service data. Uh, that's how to check the train. Uh, I don't know. There's service data in here. It can kind of suck sometimes. Let's see. Oops. Might be the wrong one. Let's just see here. Uh, this is test procedures. I don't want test procedures. I want uh, code set criteria. But it didn't have anything. Well, here, let's go out here. Okay, here we go. So, uh, so the 705, 
uh, two or more range signals simultaneously on for more than five seconds, and that's the condition we have. We could see that we had two of them that were on. So we have the, the criteria to set this. So, okay, you know, no big deal. Uh, gives you your possible causes, you know, range sensor, there's a short, so on and so forth. So I was like, okay, well, let's see how in the heck these taillights are connected. Um, let me uh, go back here. And where do we want? We want to go to our bookmarks because I saved some. And so I went to this wiring diagram because I'm like, well, this it must share ground or something. It certainly does. Because how else could this thing be, you know, screwy like this? So, come on, little fella. We want to enhance. Enhance. So here's our transmission range sensor. And it gets power, so it feeds it power. And depending on what gear you're in is which, you know, wire it sends the power to the TCM. So this is the transmission control module. So I'm like, what in the heck does this have to do anything with the lights? Because the ground for the TCM is way up under the hood. So I don't know. I don't know its connection yet, but I do know this, that when I went out and checked the lights, just based off that guy's suggestion, my lights are frigged up in the back. And that's where service uh, info like this is extremely valuable. Because I'll be honest with you, I would have went to the range sensor next. I would have checked it for proper input, proper outputs, and then I probably would have gotten lost because I would have seen uh, something that I didn't like, and I don't know if I would have traced that back to the tail lights right away. Eventually, I probably would have gotten it, but this here just saved us a whole buttload of time. Every once in a while, you get a little nugget like that where it helps, so I just turned on the marker lights. Let's go back here. So we got that marker light there. Okay, we got both plate lights. And we got a marker light here. Let's just stand back. So they look to be lit equally. Um, let me grab the big, let me grab my depressor. I've got the brake pedal depressor pushed on there. And if we sit back now, the right brake light is bright, the center one is, but look at this. Our turn signal is lit up a little bit there. Both the plate lights are still on. Okay, let's take in just for grins and googles. Let's turn on. It's got a hazards. Turn them babies on, see what happens. All right, now look at that, okay? My guy, that one's blinking, but look what's going on over here. We got a bad ground because our reverse light's blinking. Our Turning signal is a little dim, and that thing's going a little hairy. And both the plate lights are on. The plate light was off when I brought in, but look at this. This reverse light over here is kind of screwy too. I'll be dipped. And with the brake pedal being depressed, the hazards on, and the marker lights on, what service did it say? Clearly we're in the P, but it says we're in the D and we have two switches on, so we have this, the criteria for this to be set. Awesome. Hey, you gotta take a dump. So I think what we need to do, I was just looking here by the deck lid, see if there's anything funny up there. You know what we need to do, folks? I mean, this is a fairly new car. I wouldn't think it would be all corroded. We need to see what's up. Let's find out where these grounds are and take, and, uh, take care of that. So I don't know what's wrong with the car yet, but I do know that the, the tail lights are screwed up and it is, for whatever reason, seems to be connected to our issue. Uh, it certainly is giving the code set criteria. Now, take Identifix as, as it is. Uh, it's kind of a, it's kind of something that, you know, the good guys in the industry, so guys that are good diagnostic guys, uh, we tend to kind of talk a little bit about the uh, Identifix because it is such an abused uh, program simply because shops have it and you can totally get caught in the little Identifix trap where 
you don't diagnose stuff, you just start heaving parts. And you use this as, to, as a tool as far as, you know, what ammunition am I loading in my parts cannon? So you put in the year, make, model, you put in the code you're having, and it gives you the parts cannon list. That's the first thing that pops up on this, on their program, is, you know, these are the parts to change, you know, 700 people change this, 500 people change this, so on and so forth. And unfortunately, you know, these guys in the shops who are, you know, not getting paid to diagnose or don't know how, they use this as that is their go-to, identifix this, change these parts, we start loading up the magazine, we knock it in and we just start unloading and hopefully something sticks. So that's why a lot of quote unquote good guys don't like this because it can make you lazy and you can, um, you know, take this stuff and be like, hey, I'm not really gonna diagnose it, it's probably this. I like it for reasons like this, where something like this isn't in service data, you probably wouldn't have checked that. You might have got to an roundabout weight, but you're going to be a few hours into it before something like that happens. There's other situations I can think of right offhand where you, you got a circuit code, you check it out, you got power at the fuse, you got no power at the, you know, whatever the flux capacitor, it's got no power, but the fuse does. You say, okay, you know, I've got a broken wire. So before you, you look up your diagram to start breaking the system down, but you go on Identifix and you, and you check to see if there's a common brake spot a lot of people will log like hey you know i checked the canooter valve and you know i was missing power on pin 12 and there's 13 cases where guys found a broken wire by the you know by the door hinge or something like that so that can be helpful too because you know you identified like hey i got a broken wire well, let me just check there boom you go to the door hinge there's broke i'll be darn you know it's just like you know tom dick and harry here they all had the same problem so anyways enough talking i'm going to pull up the uh outer or the uh, rear light diagram here and it says that the ground and I don't know if it is a ground problem I'm assuming it is because it looks like it's using all the other uh, bulbs in there for ground but what's peculiar is that the right side um, the right side tail lamp is also you know back feeding through it which if the reverse lights are tied together it will and i assume they probably are so here it says left rear combination lamp has a ground at the left c pillar number b19 it is a black wire and that is the ground for the brakes tail turn and backup so it's uh it is the ground for the entire uh left tail light so i say this i say we take the carpet off the back we find this black wire, we see indeed if we are missing a ground, then we trace it down to wherever B19 is in the left C pillar. That's weird, B19, I've never seen, must be a, a Nissan thing here, I thought grounds were all G. The, some of the other grounds are M79, M61, that's kind of odd. Must be a Nissan thing. Anyhow, let's get after it, boys. What's up, my guy? Is this, uh, is this, is this something? Uh! Certified cat lover. Do you think that stays in there? Is that like the trunk mat or? Appears to, unless she's gonna put it up at the house. Anyhow. What's up? I have a question. For me? And? You don't want to say in front of the people? <laughs> well, let's see, so we'll pop the, oh, that one popped right out. We're gonna pop these out. See what we see. Like I say, I don't think this car is very corroded yet. <laughs> Give it time, baby. But it is uh, what four years old, so anything's possible. So we're gonna just kind of peel this down just a little. And the uh, wires there, they go right in there. So what it looks like, looks like we got to take the tail light out, which I think is some screws here. And a screw there. It looks like a couple screws and then boom. Oh, look at that. This one's loose. Or I'm super strong or stupid because I just dropped it. Look at this one's loose too. What the frig's that tell you? These are regular 10 millimeter. Let me see if I can find that one I just dropped. Like an idiot. There it is, baby. Is that the only ones? Seems like there should be something on the side. Is there one up here? Nope, it's got a little peg up in here though. Oh boy, I don't know if I want to pull on it. So there's a 
a little peg sticks through, but this is just the female receiver in here. Let me, uh, I'm gonna go out there and pull on it. Hopefully it doesn't break, but I'll turn the camera off in case it does. Oh, come on, you freaks wanna watch me break it. Ah, you mother frig hole. Okay, it turned out good, it didn't break. So it's this little male peg goes in the female hole. Basic anatomy. Knock the rocks out of it. Tell you what, before we unplug it, let's probe it from the back side and see if our ground is not a ground. Got a T-pin right here, do we? We do. Classic T-pin in the hat routine. We're gonna back probe that right there into the black. We're gonna let this hang. And then let me go get a test light. Guess what? Fixed. Freaking junk. You know why? Because we touched the connector. So that tells us something right there. Let me take care of the T pin here. Okay, let me set down the camera. Because that totally makes sense. Because the only thing we've touched is essentially the connector here. So I'm going to take and unplug it. I didn't want to unplug it, but we did wiggle it. Dang it all the heck. And the rest of the harness is in good condition up through there. I'm just going to kind of give it some wiggles down through here. But I'm going to have to assume that because we touched the connector, it probably was a problem right there. Let's see if we can't get this thing done. Wow, those pins are nice. Super nice and clean. Clean inside there. That's nice and clean. Let's take and uh, let's kind of get the ground here. A little wiggle, a little pull. Give a little pull on that side. I mean, the rest of the harness looks intact, and we didn't touch anything except for the last foot of it. I'm curious here. Let's grab the T-pin. Oh, this one, this wire, this one here is a little loose. So that one feels good. So as far as the drag test, that one feels good. This one feels good. That one feels good. This one, this one here, that one's a little loose. Yeah, so that one's a little loose compared to the other big one next to it. So, which is, that happens to be the black one. Yeah, this one, I wish I, I wish I had a way to represent how loose that is in comparison to these other ones. Mrs. O, what? we need an unbiased opinion. Oh, I got opinions. Oh, I know. They're like they might be biased. But... Opinions are like I can't even finish that one. Come here. Come down here with me, Mrs. O, on your knees. Heard <laughs> <laughs> that a time or two. Let's see. So very bossy. I know. Like this boss. is a T pin. Okay. You see how these got a T? They're T shaped. So you're gonna take a T pin. You're gonna go right in the middle here. Okay, like that, mm -hmm. and like that. Okay, and you're just gonna feel the drag. Okay, <laughs> and then, but you, make sure you stay towards the center. You see, that's the center, uh -huh. and then you're in the center of the schlock. Mm -hmm. Okay, so hold that with your two fingers. Hold this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go start down here, uh -huh. and feel the resistance. You mm -hmm. feel the resistance? I feel it. Tell me when you get to one that doesn't feel it's resistant. This one's all loosey goosey. I know, do them again. Come on, you're gonna have to be sensitive like a lady. There's one of them there that's not quite like the others. I'm um, closing my eyes. You gotta stop talking. Okay. It doesn't matter how deep it goes. No, make sure they're about the same deepness. <laughs> I mean, this one feels. Unbiased opinion, not black. Thank you. Hallelujah. I was trying to show the people that. 
I said, well, let's wait a minute. There's something ain't right. It's that one right there. It wasn't right? consistent. There was like a little tension, there's a, but there's then there's spot. like. There's a spot. Am I right? Yes. Gosh, I tell these people stuff and they're like, we don't believe you. You're an a-hole. Wow. Is like, that bad yeah. mean to you? Can you go get me a. Are you okay? I am. I'll find my magnet bar. Will you get the orange handled pry driver? Bottom magnet bar, please, and thank you. So there you have it, folks. I wanted to show you an unbiased opinion. Mrs. O, completely unbiased. You mean this bent screwdriver? Yes, yeah, pry driver. Looks like a bent screwdriver. I made a uh, short on how to make these yourself. I wonder how difficult that was. Well, the smarty pants, how do you think I made it then? Did it involve heat? No. Did it involve a... Uh, yes, a hammer. Press, or a... Vice. Vice? Yes. There you go. You're too smart for your own good, Mrs. L. How in the thunder do you think this connector comes apart? This thing popped up, so that's fun. So that's part of it. Does it come up off all the way? I feel like I'm going to break it if I do, but I doubt it. I doubt it. Oh, dear. Don't eat your words. I might. That's the beauty of the edit. But there's also the, like, still zooming, like, oh, yeah, he definitely broke it. I didn't break it. No. Well, a little bit. What? Not really. Maybe. I probably did. What are you doing to it? Um, well, the way I look at it, it's already broke. Can you shut off the four-way flashers and the marker lights and the brake lights? What we need to do is we need to pull the black wire out. You got them turned off there, old girl? I'm working on okay. it. Okay. Um, we need yeah. to pull the black wire out. Oh, I know I have a tool for this. Am I Is using Is there anything it? you don't have a tool for? Yes, ma'am. A broken heart. <laughs> huh? It's your kindness that heals a broken heart. Mm -hmm. I thought it's what you killed people with. Kindness? Yeah. You kill broken hearts with kindness. Boom, look at that. Oh, she comes, baby. So, there it is. So now, we can get to the inside part of the tang here. There's are you just, are you gonna change just that little part of it? No, we're gonna tighten it up. Oh. Just by reaching down and giving it the flickeroo. What made it get loose? I don't know, got used too much, what do you think? <laughs> That's a myth. I know. Let's see. Otherwise, everything would be falling apart around yeah, here. Yeah. Let's see. I think she's tight like a tiger now. So I just push the little flippy doodads down. You'll see it. It's hard to, it's hard to show. And then we're going to take and crank that right back in there. Just like so till she clicks. Hear that? <laughs> um, <laughs> will you go get that AES wave test, you test kit? The blue and gray with the white stripe. We're gonna stick this little guy back on. Which way did it go, fella? That way that's clicked, okay? All right, my guy? And now we're gonna use the proper uh, pin drag test kit. It's not a pin drag tester, but I it's thought better. that's what I was for. <laughs> well, you're gonna you're gonna try this for us, but I want to make sure I've got the right one. A couple different sizes here, folks. We're gonna have you got a couple big holes and you got a couple little ones. Oh, that she's extra tight now. Just a minute, I gotta straighten that out a little. Bend them down a little too far. That's good. Oh yeah, because now this is our black wire. It's tight. Oh, it's like a tiger. It's tight. <laughs> So now she's got some good connection. And we know the other ones are good because they weren't giving us a fit, but you technically should use a, something like this for drag testing an appropriate size, not a T-pin, although T-pins work great for most things. You didn't hear it from me. And then, you know, you get the appropriate size for the other pins and you can drag test them to see what they feel like. So anyhow. You want to feel it now, Mrs. O? No, I, I can bet see you it. I you do. I bet you do. I can see it dragging. Look at that. So now, 
this should fix her transmission oops in her transmission range sensor problem so we'll plug that back in we'll get that back in the hall we'll line that up is that lined up up there miss though There we go. Boom, that's back in. There you go. You fix it. Junior technician. And there's that. I suppose we should probably tighten these tighter than finger tight. That's how we took them off, but we'll do it, leave it a little better. Have you guys a 10 millimeter nut driver, please? Right hand side. What? Yeah, the right hand side set of small drawers there on the metric side. Uh, second one down. Second one down. That's third. Number two. There you go. One, two, Mrs. O. One, two. 10 millimeter. Uh, it's the orange and red handles, or yellow and red handles. Third, third one, third one from the right. Yeah. Go all the way to the right yeah. to third one. Gosh. Yes. Just kidding. Uh huh. Next time I will electrocute you. <laughs> that would be fun, wouldn't it? You could have got me today, but you didn't. That old freaking piece of crap F Super Duty we were working on. I could have got you. Yeah. When I was playing with plug wires. How would I know? <laughs> Just crank the engine over and watch me scream. Oh, dang. You could have got me. I need to know this stuff. Yeah. Well, you should watch the self made auto channel. <laughs> I live in it. I know you do. We're more than just innuendos, Mrs. O. Help us out, man. Will you hop in there and start it up? All right, we're ready. We're ready. Step on the brakes. Reverse. Oh, they're bright. Left. Your other left. Marker lights. Oh, you're good. Now brakes with your marker lights on. And your left turn. And reverse. Boom, you're good. All right, all right. Thank you. Thanks, Mrs. O. We love you. Fire this back up. Set that to the side. Fire this thing up. Let's see here. We'll go back here and we'll go to diagnosis. We'll get back to um, all signals. We want to make sure that we fixed it. Reverse neutral dry and range. So we are in park. Reverse, drive, neutral, drive, low, neutral. Oh, she's quick now. You see how quick and snappy that is? Neutral, drive, reverse, drive, low, drive, neutral, drive, park. Look at that, it's fixed. Unbelievable. To pass the code, we're going to erase them. Easy peasy, uh, providing that you have the right information. So that's great. That was uh, not too bad a fix. And ultimately, uh, we were able to see that we had some pin fitment issue, you know, pin drag test. Nah, not quite right. Uh, did I take the connector apart the right way? No. Should we have gotten a new pin? Uh, I don't think so. It wasn't corroded. It didn't look like it had any kind of arcing from you know from being loose in there maybe it would have at some point and you know eventually would have melted down but you know taking the pin apart and squeezing the terminals uh works just fine in certain situations so in this one i think it works fine however regardless of what the fix was i just wanted to show the value of service data of different types of service data where you use mitchell or all data or oem or identifix or auto logic or whatever one you use uh, certain aspects of it is very valuable not just for you know OE service info but little tips and tricks like that folks that's where it's at because now we can go charge this customer eight hours I'm just kidding we ain't gonna do that you jerks <laughs> I would be the jerk then in that case anyhow don't be a jerk and go into that comment section the questions the comments let me know if you know an identifixer mechanic oh and uh, what you think about that or if you work with guys like that and encourage them to not do that to maybe think about it put it in your pocket do it the right way insty the facebook and just remember viewers if i can do it you can do it thanks for watching